Hey there, it's Mark with Mark's Astro Journey. In this imaging session, I'm targeting the Pinwheel Galaxy, also known as Messier 101. And it's around 23 million light years away. It's in the constellation Ursa Major. And here's a quick look at the equipment setup before I get started. Easier to do this while it's daylight. Get everything out and hook it up. And then do the polar alignment once it gets dark. And here's the skyline. As you can see, I'm surrounded by trees. So I just slewed to the Pinwheel Galaxy, or M101. I'm going to do a plate solve and resync to line up the mount on the target. I'll speed this up so we don't have to wait through this. Okay, so it had to do an adjustment of 0.15 degrees. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase my exposure time to 2 minutes. And I'm going to go ahead and start guiding. It's very faint, but I see that Pinwood Galaxy here in the center looks pretty well lined up. Here's what our histogram is looking like, but the guiding is looking pretty good right now. So comparing the Pinwood Galaxy to the Milky Way Galaxy, it's pretty large. It's about 70% larger, has a diameter of about 170,000 light years. It's a face-on galaxy. So I'm hoping this uh, imaging session will turn out a pretty nice image in the end. So we'll go back and we'll check this two-minute capture and then kick off um, an imaging session of M101. Just going to adjust the time here to three hours. So our light frame capture will complete around 12.08. So looking at the Pinwheel Galaxy, it's not symmetrical. And given that it is asymmetrical, uh, they think that probably it had a near collision with another galaxy and this kind of caused that asymmetry and also they feel that that near collision may have um, kind of stirred up additional star formation so it's pretty interesting the fact you know when you think about how galaxies sometimes do collide or nearly collide and the effect it has on them. Just checking in here it's about um, around 40 minutes in to the imaging session. Here's what things are looking like in sharp cap. And then looking at the guiding, it's looking pretty bad. I don't see any high clouds. Maybe there's some high clouds and they're very wispy or transparent. That's my only guess. I don't see any cable snag. We'll let this continue, but hard to know how this is going to turn out. So we'll check back in a little bit. So according to the write-up, the Pinwell Galaxy has about a trillion stars. And the disk has a mass of about a hundred billion solar masses and the central bulge has a mass of about three billion solar masses and they also mentioned that it has kind of some of the similar characteristics to the Andromeda galaxy. So I came out and the guiding was pretty bad shape. The scale was like all over the place. So I stopped the guiding and when I tried to restart it, it said the speed, mount speed was different from the last calibration. So I'm doing a, a forced uh, recalibration and I'll let it go through that and see if the guiding looks a little better. Speeding this up, I suspect that the guiding lost communication with the mount is what happened. Okay, so the guiding seems to be back on track to a certain degree, but we'll check back in in a little while. So the write-up also says that M101 has six prominent uh, companion galaxies and these are the probably the galaxies that have interacted with it and likely gave it like the spiral shape that it has. Okay checking back in here it's 1107 and since I recalibrated the guiding it's looking better. Take a look at sharp cap looking about the same over here. Okay about another hour to go. When the light frames finished capturing I got a little distracted and slewed to M3 just to see what that was looking like tonight. But I've put the end cap on and I'm going to capture some darks now for my M101 imaging session. And here we see the darks wrapping up. There were four supernova observations within the Pinwell Galaxy. And there was one in 1909, another in 1951, another in um, 1970, and then another in 2011. Several days after I'd completed this imaging session, I saw a news article where an amateur astronomer had captured a recent supernova in the Pinwheel Galaxy, which is pretty interesting. So it's time to put on the light panel and capture some flat frames, and we'll go with 200 of those. So here in AstroPixel Processor, I'm going to load up my lights flats, bias, and dark frames. 
and then I'll sort by quality and kick off the analyze which is going to do the calibration and also um, validate the quality of the data that we've captured. In this imaging session, I'm using my Skywatcher 100 ED APO refractor, and I'm also using a ZWO camera, as well as the field flattener made for this telescope. I did a total of three hours of imaging, and my exposure time was two minutes. So once the analyze is completed, we can go through and look at the quality of the data we captured. In this case, I know I had the disconnect between the PhD to guide in the mount occur. So I know I'm going to have a pretty good number of bad frames during that time period. So I'm going to go through and find those, remove those, and only leave the good frames. And now I'll kick off the integration to do the normalize, register, and stacking. Now that the integration is completed, I'm going to make a few adjustments to black point, gamma correction, saturation, and then I'm going to save um, the file in a couple formats. So I captured a total of 90 light frames and I actually was able to keep about 50 of those. I probably lost 15 to 20 frames because the PhD2 guiding disconnected or didn't continue communicating with the mount properly and I had to stop and reconnect and um, calibrate that again in the middle. But I also lost some other frames because some satellite and airplane crossovers occurred during the imaging session. Here you can see this stacked image from APP and it does have some artifacts. It also looks like the camera sensor temperature must have changed as the calibration frames didn't really cover that hot spot on the right hand side. So here in Cyril I'm going to do a background extraction and once you generate this you'll remove these little icons of little dots or squares over top of the galaxy so as not to do background extraction where the galaxy itself is located in the field of view. So once I deselect all of those little um, boxes over top of the galaxy I'll just then um, compute the background and then apply it. And then I'll save this out um, to reflect kind of what stage I'm at in this post-processing with the name of the file that I create. So you'll notice here I'm changing it to um, the complete image but with the back background extracted. And I'm just saving it also as a TIFF. So I saved it as a FIT and as a TIFF. It seems like uh, StarNet needs a 16-bit TIFF for processing to remove the stars. So now I'm going to use StarNet to remove the stars from the image so that I can um, try to bring out the most data of just the galaxy portion of the data that was captured and then recombine it afterwards. So this StarNet application, I'm running like the command line version of it and you have to give it like the file name and then you give it a file name that you want to target as your output. So I'll put starless in the name of that output file and then run it to remove the stars from the image. So now back in Cyril, I'm going to use the background extracted image that's more the full image and then also the starless image to actually um, subtract, do another subtraction and get the stars only. So here I rename the images with a variable name starless and then complete and then up in the formula field above take complete and subtract starless and then click on apply. And the end result we're hoping for is just the stars. This way we can do our post-processing on the stars alone 
and the galaxy alone. So I'm going to do a histogram stretch and looking at the histogram it looks like it's the black point is clipped on the left hand side but the interesting thing is in sharp cap when I was doing the imaging session the the histogram didn't really seem to show that it was clipped on the left hand side so I'm not quite sure what's going on with that. So I'll also adjust um, the black point and I just want to mention if you notice the date on the screen of the computer this is at a later date and the reason is I forgot to record this step um, when I was going through the initial um, post processing so I had to go back and um, pull up you know these images and go through the step again. So when I went to save it, the file already existed. So um, that's why you see that discrepancy in the sequencing. So now it's time to recombine the data captured to put the starless portion of the data back together with the stars to give us the complete image and then we can make some minor adjustments once it's recombined. So once again we'll use pixel math to choose the, the starless image and the stars image and then use the formula to put them back together. I'm going to crop this to get rid of these stacking artifacts and that hot spot that wasn't covered by the calibration frame. I'm going to go ahead and just save this with the name Cyril M101 Cyril Final. So saving it as a fit lets me come back and do other work if I decide I want to come back and do some more post-processing, but also save it as a TIFF so I can use that for publishing. So now taking a look at the file, the image file outside Cyril, I think I want to make a little more adjustment to the black point. So just take another quick look to confirm the outcome of that change, and I like it. Here's a quick look at the stacked image from AstroPixel Processor, so kind of the first phase of image processing. And here's the image after post-processing in Cyril. I seem to be finding in Cyril that it seems to look good on the screen in Cyril. I save it out to a file, and then I go to use that file later, open it, and it seems to be grainy looking. So I opened this um, image up processed in Cyril and I opened that up in GIMP and I just used the brightness contrast adjustment of GIMP to tone it down a little and make it look a little more natural. So I hope you enjoyed this imaging session. Please leave your comments to let me know how you think it turned out in the end. And I'm wishing you clear skies. Mm -hmm.